Welcome to Cultured. This is my album review of Anime Trauma and Divorce by Open Mike Eagle. So, Open Mike Eagle, apparently a fan of anime, has dropped a new album. I don't watch any anime at all, so shout out People of Genius. Not the people who run the company, the people who run the website. All of the people contributing their annotations to the songs they are the people who matter yeah so thank you to all of them for highlighting all of the anime references sort of peppered throughout the album he hasn't had the best year the poor bloke 2020 hasn't been easy on any of us but he has had it extra tough going through a divorce he has a child i'm not very good at guessing ages and i haven't even seen him but i would guess he's between 8 and 10 he is also 39 years old which is towards the top end for rappers uh, so obviously going through as shit of a year as he has gone through you're going to be battling your inner demons a lot and yeah that's exactly what this album is it's it's a f***ing amazing album too he's managed to turn something very negative into something very positive and yeah I, like i genuinely hope that he's okay um throughout this album he's incredibly self-aware especially on um, Aeroplane Boneyard. He talks about the career path that he chose and the fact that he regrets it. He is nowhere near as far as he hoped he would be at this point in his life. He listened to everyone say, no, don't do it. He did it anyway. And now at 39, he hasn't really got anything to show for all of the hard work he's put into it. Quit a whole job and busted my ass. End of that road wasn't no cash. Left my scene and walked on my own road. Then I woke up a million years old. He has a trait that not many people have as well, where he's able to point the finger at himself and say, okay, I was to blame for that. That's my fault. He does that in almost every song, showing a massive amount of self-awareness. Although I do hope that he's not blaming himself for things that aren't his fault. I know that's, that's very easy to do uh, when you're down in the dumps, battling the blues. Uh, the first track, Death Parade, is an ode to the cycle of trauma which I really like. I don't think I've seen a song sort of dedicated to that. But dude got screwed up because shit got burned up. So he fucked her up. Then she turned big. I got chewed up. That shit fucked me up. So I'm a fuck you up. Like people just hurting others as a form of therapy to sort of like help even things out in their own brain. And like he's got a bridge in there too that's just it's spoken word and I love it. Like he knows what he's doing. He knows he's purposely hurting other people for like for his own benefit. Now I think we got it figured out. It's a cycle. And you know, now that we know, it'll never happen. And like you can hear the sarcasm in it. I I really like that. The only two songs I did like was um like the first one was Head Ass, basically just an anthem for all of the head asses out there. The lyrics are seriously lacking. Uh, and then the second song I, I disliked was Everything Ends Last Year. And to be honest, I don't really dislike that song. It's incredibly pleasant to listen to. I just have no clue what it's about. It's an incredibly cryptic song. Uh, there's four verses, no chorus. And as far as I can tell, each verse is its own little story. I think the first verse is just internal battles. There's not really too much to go off of there, but the line... Regardless where the sun is, I'm my own personal winter. I'm cold. I think I'm cold. I'm just trying to remember. Like, that sounds as though he's describing depression. The second verse, I literally have no clue. Like, my guess is that he did some sort of event that may have been televised, like a Jimmy Fallon type thing or something, and it just it didn't go very well. The third verse tells the story of trying to start a record label with his brother. I assume it's his brother. Um, but as the saying goes, don't do business with friends or family. They had a falling out over money and data. And then I would guess that the last verse is about his ex-wife. We tried doing forever. We tried doing what they tried to do, but we tried doing it better. We tried alone and together. Tried until we got tired of losing, tired of pulling on levers. Like, I really like that song, especially the, like, alone and together. Like, it that sort of... That's a really cool way of saying they took a break and tried to, like, you know, stay separated but stay together, if that makes sense. Like, take a break, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I do want to play a little bit of that song, though, because that is really, really nice. Like, I really like the the bareback instrumental. You know, it's very slow guitar. We thought we were 
so clever. Just put me on that TV screen because pop. I love this. We did it. It's such a good song, but it is very cryptic, and it just it hurts my soft head trying to wrap my hand around it. Hand around it. There is one song that offers absolutely no explanation whatsoever. That is the Black Mirror episode where he says the the Black Mirror episode ruined my marriage. Now you may be thinking it's a bit of a meme, or he like just means something else by it, but he doesn't. That's exactly what he means. Uh, if I was petty, I would try it as a court case. The goddamn episode raised the divorce rate. This one episode broke my house. We was just sitting there, quiet on the couch. It was a good ten minutes, then it all went south. So goddamn heavy, couldn't open my mouth. Should have picked something else. Anything else. So I want you guys to chuck a comment down below of what episode you think it was. My guess is it's the one where there's the grain in the head. And the guy, like, catches his wife cheating on him. And, like, as they're watching the event, like, you can sort of, like, stream it to a TV. They're watching, like, her memory, like, through her eyes of him cheating, of her cheating on his husband. As they're watching it, she's like, oh, no, that was ages ago. That was before you and I. And then he just drops a bombshell, like, that painting in the background. I bought that for you earlier this year. I think it's that one. But, yeah, I genuinely don't know. It, it could be any of them. He's got one line in there, actually, as well. It's... Something like, because we looked in that black mirror and it was you and I, or something like that. I thought that was really nice. Sweatpants Spider-Man is another one about his age. Uh, in the last verse, he personifies a stereotype. Uh, man's about to be 40. Lordy. New car because I'm sporty. But the second verse has to be my favourite. Uh, Court's now in recess. Little slow in my reflex. Dry cereal, wheat checks. Finally trying that v-neck. Started doing more push-ups. Back pain when I look up. Talking down what I put up. Knee hurt when I stood up. Instagram for my joggers. Got a dad bod like my father. Damn, I should have went up a size. And I'm wondering, why do I bother? But, like, despite all of that, he's still, like, trying to better himself, which is, a, you know, a really good thing. And then what the, what the f*** is self-care is another track where he's trying to better himself, like eating kale cubes and all that stuff. But at the start of the song, there's like a little noise. It Care cures the fuck is self- Maybe like a little kazoo or something. And it just, it perfectly, like, encapsulates confusion. The project had two features that were pretty good. There was Video Dave, who was decent, but then Curry Foe uh, was really good. The song that she was on was just amazing. Um, Boo Charity. Boo Charity, something like that, where in the intro, Kari says, sorry to call you in, I need a helping hand, I broke the zipper again, and it's the zipper on her back, and then Mike details, you know, like the zipper, his life is falling apart, he needs to be put back together again, but there is a third feature, who's on two songs, his son, Lil Acer, I really like that, Acer's Bop is a song where he's battling his He's, like, really battling his demons. Not Acer. Mike. Mike is really battling his demons. But he can hear his son singing in the other room. And that's what's getting him through that. I really, really like that. Um, and the last track is incredibly sweet. He tried to go scuba diving with his son and ended up almost drowning. And then he wrote a song based off of that. Uh, his son has a verse. But the last chorus is my favourite. Um, I am going to play that. Like, his son is just giving his performance his all. Listen to that. His son's going in. And, like, you can just hear the smile on Mike's face. You know, you, you know that he's just... He's loving watching his son perform on stage. And he's overjoyed that they can do it together. Yeah, I, I think it's a very sweet way to end an amazing album about battling your demons. Um, and, like, I think considering that's the way he ended the album, that, like, almost anything can happen to him. And as long as he's got his son there, he's going to be okay. Yeah, I, I loved that album. Eight and a half out of ten for that one. Fuck it. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten for that one. I really, really enjoyed that album. So well done, Mike. Um, I've listened to him before, but never a full album. And I'm thinking that now I'm going to have to go back and listen to all of his discography. And it's not very often that an artist can like make me want to do that. So yeah, well done, Mike. Love the album. And yeah, I hope you're doing okay. But your son's there, so I know you are. Be sure to check back in two days on Monday, where I have a look at some sneakers that are releasing over the next week. I'll see you then.
that's a wrap.